Story recap here. Today, I'm going to explain a crime, horror, and mystery film called Double Walker. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. On Christmas, a little girl is found dead in a small midwestern town. Her father has to face everyone who offers their condolences, but her mother chooses not to interact with them and even pushes the Christmas tree down. One day, Brian goes to the woods to play with his dog, Pony. However, when the dog suddenly disappears, he goes to look for it and finds it with a girl who's barefooted. Concerned that the girl is cold, Brian quickly gives his jacket to her. Later that day, Brian drives around town to see where the girl lives, asking if there's somebody he can call for her. He also wants to know if she needs to go to the hospital, but the girl remains silent and just stares out the window. Moments later, Brian takes the girl to his house and prepares a cup of tea for her. He then gives her a blanket to keep herself warm and as he watches the girl drink her tea, it is obvious that he's interested in her. However, he makes sure not to let the girl notice and he leaves to get her some warmer clothes to change into. Meanwhile, the girl looks around the house and opens a music box, but Brian quickly returns and sees her. He tells the girl the music box was his grandmother's and then he offers to help her change her clothes. But once Brian takes the girl's shirt off, he fails to stop himself from touching her. The girl then holds Brian's hand and makes him sit, letting him watch as she turns on the music box and dances. Brian is completely mesmerized by the girl's body and moves, but the girl takes the teaspoon from the cup and suddenly stabs him in the neck. Then, once Brian is dead, the girl tastes his blood from the spoon and kisses him. After that, the mysterious girl goes to the house of the little girl who died. She then sits beside the little girl's mother as she watches a movie, but the woman doesn't notice her. Moments later, when the little girl's mother falls asleep, the mysterious girl tells her she once had a dream of being in that house. She tells the woman she opened the door after hearing someone knocking, and she saw a black car running at the driveway. Then, the faceless driver got out and opened the trunk, and she got in. Somewhere in town, the mysterious girl follows a man as he heads home, but she's distracted by a guy named Jack. Jack offers to give her a jacket inside the movie theater, and once they're inside, she starts to wander around. Jack finds the mysterious girl a few minutes later and gives her a coat, and the two go outside for a walk. Eventually, they reach Jack's car where he gives her a pair of boots. It seems like Jack isn't used to talking to women, for he isn't exactly sure what to say to her. However, Jack still offers to take the mysterious girl home, even though she's not saying a word and he doesn't know where she lives. A few minutes later, Jack takes the mysterious girl to his apartment and gives her a blanket, just like Brian did. He also prepares a cup of tea for her, and she thanks him for the hospitality. Then, Jack tells the mysterious girl he needs to take his brother to his wrestling practice the next day, so he just lets her watch television in the living room before going to bed. However, the mysterious girl is already gone the next day when Jack wakes up. Back in the little girl's house, the mysterious girl continues her story about the night she got inside the faceless driver's car, saying she wasn't afraid. Then, the driver opened the truck when they reached the desert, and she saw two dark figures. One of them told her that if she went with them, she could live one last day, make her amends, and then she'd be gone. The other told her if she went with them, she could live forever. However, she would never be seen by anyone except for believers and sinners, and the mysterious girl chose the latter. Then, suddenly, she was in that house again, and she was older. She wasn't even sure how old she was, and she watched as the little girl's parents dealt with their loss. At this point, it is revealed that the mysterious girl is the ghost of the little girl who died, and she saw Brian in her wake alongside the man from the town. In the present, the ghost attacks the guy from the town while he's having his car cleaned at the car wash. The authorities soon find his body, and as the ghost watches them from afar, it becomes clear that she's haunting all the men she believes are responsible for her death. That night, the ghost goes to the house of a young boy, who sees her while he's playing with his toys. The ghost then approaches him, and the boy asks if she wants to play with him. So the two play together and surprisingly, the ghost finds herself having fun. A few minutes later, the boy's father calls him for dinner and the kid tells the ghost to join them. However, as she sits at the table, she can't help but feel sad and think of her own family. Meanwhile, the boy's mother talks to her husband about the guy from the car wash, telling him that the DNA of the dead little girl is on his body. She wonders how that happened, but her husband can't answer her question. On the other hand, the ghost remembers seeing her father let a man and an 18-year-old girl in their house, and they were shortly followed by the guy from the town and Brian. After that, the ghost returns to the movie theater to see Jack, who wonders where she went the previous night and if she's okay. The ghost then asks Jack what he'd choose, if given a chance to live forever as a ghost or live one more day as a human, and the guy chooses the latter. Curious, the ghost asks him why, so Jack says he wouldn't be able to manage his theater if he wasn't human. He also says he wouldn't be able to see his father or talk to her, adding that there are many good little things about humanity. At the same time, Jack says being stripped of all of that as a ghost doesn't seem worth it. Then, Jack asks the ghost what she's doing for the night, inviting her to a party he's attending. Moments later, Jack goes back to his place with a ghost and gives her something to wear. Then, they go to the house of Jack's friend, where the other guests have already started partying. 
Of course, the ghost has to drink too, and she tries to have fun while dancing with Jack. After the party, the ghost returns to the movie theater with Jack. They then watch one of Jack's old family videos, which shows his father and uncle when they were young. Unfortunately, his uncle just died of lung cancer a few months ago, and they found that video while going through his stuff. Jack feels emotional as the video plays, saying it's like watching his ghost. Meanwhile, the ghost just listens intently to Jack, not daring to interrupt him as he speaks. Moments later, Jack falls asleep, so the ghost takes him back to his apartment and stays with him while watching television. Later that night, the ghost goes to a bar, where she is found by one of her father's friends. The man doesn't hesitate to approach her, even though she looks so young, and he immediately offers her money to sleep with him. However, the ghost ghost doesn't say anything and simply smiles, but the man takes that as a yes. Unfortunately, he doesn't know that the ghost can't wait to end his life. Moments later, the man takes the ghost to a motel, looking around and trying to make sure that nobody's around. He then lets the ghost inside the room, turning on the television to set the mood for them. After that, the man asks the ghost if he can film them, but he doesn't even wait for her answer and sets up his phone on the bedside table. The man just can't wait to sleep with the ghost, so he immediately takes off her coat and tries to make a move on her. However, the ghost playfully pushes him to the bed and removes her shirt, making the man think he's about to hit the jackpot. Unfortunately for him, the ghost eagerly stabs him in the neck with a teaspoon, and everything is caught on camera. It isn't long before the man dies, but as she tastes his blood on the teaspoon, the motel cleaner suddenly walks in on them. Shocked, the cleaner quickly runs away when the ghost starts chasing him. Unfortunately, the ghost catches up to the cleaner in the woods and stabs him, leaving the poor guy wondering what he did wrong. However, the ghost only looks at him as he tells her he doesn't want to die, but he soon meets his end. Realizing she made a mistake, the ghost cries beside the cleaner, before finally dragging his body away. The next day, the cleaner's body is eventually found by the boy's mother from earlier, Detective Sharon. Meanwhile, the ghost goes to Jack's place and waits for him outside until he wakes up. Jack wonders if she got any sleep last night, so she tells him she did. Jack then starts talking about a dream he had, and once he's done telling the story, he invites the ghost to his brother's wrestling match in school. Once they get to school, Jack shows the ghost a picture of his father and leaves his phone with her, telling her to wave him down if she sees his old man. So Jack leaves the ghost on the bleachers, and as she looks at the photo of Jack's father, she realizes that he's the motel cleaner. The ghost can only look at Jack from afar as she thinks about what she's done, and it isn't long before the Fairview Police Department calls his phone. However, instead of giving it to Jack, the ghost answers the phone and listens to Detective Sharon. Unfortunately, the ghost can't bring herself to speak and decides just to end the call. The ghost tries her best not to cry, and as Jack looks over to the bleachers, she's already gone. Meanwhile, it is finally revealed through a flashback that the ghost died inside their house. Her mother was the one who cleaned their bloodstains on the floor, and her father was close with the three men she killed. Also, her father made her promise not to tell her mother that his friends were secretly coming over to their house. In the present, the ghost returns to their house and looks for her mother, but the place is already empty. She then wanders around just to make sure her mother isn't really there, eventually seeing the spot where she died. Unfortunately, all the ghost can do is think about how her loved ones move on with their lives while she remains alone and invisible. The morning before she died, the little girl witnessed how her parents argued. Her father kept belittling her mother and he accidentally knocked her unconscious. Scared, the little girl ran upstairs and locked herself in a closet, but her father ordered her to come out and almost hit her with the bat when she opened the door. However, in a twist of events, the ghost catches the bat and takes him to another room before beating him to death. Now, this is the part where everything changes. Instead of the little girl, it's the father who dies. All of his friends remain alive too, and while Jack gets to be with his father again, the little girl lives a quiet life with her mother. But in the end, the movie is left open to interpretation. The little girl's death still remains a mystery, and while it's strongly hinted that it's her father who accidentally killed her, what's certain is that he's just like his friends who like to prey on young girls. However, the movie gives us another conclusion, where the little girl gets to live with her mother. It may be just the ghost's imagination or the mother's dream, but either way, the film manages to show the tragic truth about abuse and death. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.